Hi, and welcome to the A Quilting Life podcast. I'm Chelsea from Chelsea Stratton Designs. And I'm Sherry McConnell from A Quilting Life. And it is Monday, October 23rd. And we are excited for today's podcast. We are also filming a little bit early. You'll notice I didn't bring a change of a shirt. So we are recording two today because (laughs) I like to make fun of myself, you guys. But we are recording a second episode today. So this is in advance and because we are getting ready for quilt market, which we just recently mentioned. Yes. We are going. When you, yes. And when you listen to the episode today, we will be leaving at the end of the week to set up the booth and be at market and so excited to be there and bring back lots of fun things to tell you about it. Definitely. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, the anticipation is really high for me because we haven't been since we shared our summer suite collection. Right. So that's really crazy. Yeah. Did you see that picture I posted in yes. Instagram? I went back and I wanted to find a picture from the last market and I couldn't believe it was summer suite. I yeah. just had forgotten how long it had been. We look different too. Like it's so just probably everything. aged a little bit, I guess me anyway. I, yeah, I feel like I look different. I don't know. Yeah, actually, and there will be an episode next Monday, which will be a listener question episode, which will also be taped very shortly so that we have that week off. All prepared. Yes. So we can just focus on Quilt Market because a lot's going on. We do hope to get some content from Quilt Market and share that with you all afterwards as well. I actually have on the schedule the first podcast in November, which is the second Monday, will be about quilt market. Quilt market recap. (laughs) Okay, so I don't want to forget our sponsor, Cozy Earth, because they are always giving us the gift of a good night's sleep. And their products are made from viscose, from bamboo. And they have everything from sheets, which I know we both have, and pajamas. I have the pajamas, love them. Right. And to scrunchies, to towels, everything. Loungewear. Yeah, loungewear. So we are really grateful for them for sponsoring this podcast. And don't forget that you can use the code AQUILTINGLIFE for 35% off your Cozy Earth order. Okay, so we, mom actually has today's quilts. And this is really bringing it back, actually, since we're going to quilt market, because this was the first collection released after Summer Suite when we were at quilt market, which is so crazy. Yes, this was the first. Balboa. Yes, Balboa. This was the first collection that I actually sewed with in this house, too. So because we moved in between that quilt market. That was the same time. Yes. So. We, yeah, we moved into this house the first week of March 2020. And so, yeah, this was the first group that I was sewing with here. And there are actually a couple of different reasons that I chose these quilts. One of them was I have a quilt with this collection that I've had on my bed all summer and I took it off. And so I, you know, now that I have the quilts organized by collection, so I found it... I found these when I was putting that one away because it was from Balboa as well. But I chose Coastal because I don't know that it's ever been on the wall. It was in American Patchwork and Quilting. And then I have a pattern available for it now. But I just couldn't remember if I'd ever put it on the wall. And so then I I, don't think you ever did, just from my memory. yeah. Yeah. So and then I wanted something to coordinate with. And I thought of Blooms because... Also because I'm getting ready for market and we're going to have a little hexagon flower demonstration at our booth that if you're there, you can stop by for. We're going to have some really great small project ideas with hexagons and we'll be just kind of demoing the method that I use. And so I thought about this quilt. So that's where they are. And the quilt on the wall is actually you can make it with a layer cake and then the additional fabrics and then... The quilt on the table, we did have pre-cut hexagons that were available. They are not available anymore, but you can still make this with a fat eighth bundle and you can cut out your hexagon templates and have enough fabric for everything with a fat eighth bundle. I have a couple things I want to say. I love that sometimes you'll do different low volume prints from the collection in these squares, Uh but I really love that you kept them the same. 
Yeah. That is a print I honestly want to go back to. I love that print. Is that the yeah. only Paisley that we've done? It's the only Paisley we I think. have. I think we need a new Paisley one of these days. Yeah. A new Paisley. And then yeah. the Bloom's quilt on the table. I actually helped you render the image in Illustrator. Remember, yes. we were trying to get a good... Yes. Yeah. And now I actually... I've learned how to do hexagons in EQ now. Yes. So thanks to Natalie, who helps so much with our patterns. Yeah. I actually reached out to her and she kind of walked me through the steps so I could design hexagon projects in EQ. So she's like the EQ guru. Yes. Like the things that I, I can't even imagine. I'm like, yes. how did you do that? And she's like, it's okay. I got it. Yes. Natalie is wonderful. Yes. She's awesome. Yeah. So, and then. Yeah, I also wanted to mention on the table, we have a couple things that were sent from Fat Quarter Shop. And one of them is their new Simply Jelly Rolls pattern book. And it's really nice. I love the hard cardboard cover and that it's spiral bound so you can have it flat. And there are 16, <laughs> 16 <laughs> jelly roll quilts in this book. So it's this is a really great value from It's So Emma, Simply Jelly Rolls. And then also, I thought this was so cool. It's called the Big Hexy Project Bag. And that's what it is. It's just a really nice big project bag. You could put an entire quilt in here and a nice zipper. And I'm thinking this might be going with me to Quilt Market to pack up stuff for the demonstration I yeah. was talking about with the hexes they uh, my whole demo would fit in here and uh, it would be great for the suitcase so. can I just tell you how obsessed I am with this bag that they made it extra large with yes. the handles yes as soon as I saw it uh, boing, yeah. like I need it yeah I that's amazing this. yeah so thank you to fat quarter shop for always sending fun things for us yeah. to, and we have the smaller project bags w that they've sent before yeah. and you have some and I have some and but this big one is really nice yeah I'm like thinking I need an extra one for the pool in the summer when I go yeah, yeah to put the kids like goggles and sunscreen and oh yeah and it's mesh yeah so I like the hard it's breathable. mesh yeah yeah I like that it's breathable yeah yeah, it's a love good this, material. Love this bag. That was that was a good yeah. call, Fat Quarter Shop. <laughs> we love you. Yes. <laughs> Is it similar to the ones they sent a while back, just bigger? Yeah, or? it's the yeah. same material, just bigger, and with these big straps. straps yeah, yeah, I like yeah. the straps. Yeah. I think it's fantastic. Yeah, And love this, this isn't a type of material that's going, it's like a good durable material. That's uh -huh. what I like about it. Yeah. Awesome. One note I was going to say about your quilts today is that when I turn the light, we, we're doing, this is our second episode that we're recording today, like Chelsea mentioned earlier. So we switched out the quilts and we put these ones up and then I turned the lights back on and it just looked different in the room. And I almost felt like, did the lights, did I make it more yellow than white or like what's going on? And then my mom mentioned that the background fabric is different. And you can see that with the quilts on the ladders right yes so what There's, was the background for those so again? yeah the quilts on the ladders they have the bella 200 as a base background and these have the bella 60 which is the ivory so it's the ivory compared to the off-white and there is quite a difference i it's a huge difference so this was also a moment of we made the transition after this, I believe. No, yeah, after Seashore well, Drive. Happy Go Lucky still had it. So wasn't not, it... Not Happy Go Lucky, Happy wasn't Days. Wasn't it Sincerely Yours we went in between? We didn't go to 200, yeah. but we went to... We went to, to like Porcelain. Porcelain with yeah. that one. Started transitioning. Yeah, we still had this ivory. And then we... Which is more yellow toned. It's much wa warmer, I would yeah. say. And then Sincerely Yours, we went to a Porcelain. And after that, we switched to Bella 200. And not that we didn't love the ivory. Everything was very, very warm before. But I feel like our new designs and the collections resonate more with the Bella 200. Yeah. And I love it. I love that we transitioned. Yeah. It was a big change for us. Yeah. And I appreciate both phases yeah. of our journey. Right. Yeah, it just threw me off because I hadn't seen some of these <laughs> yeah, quilts for so right. long. And I... 
I thought there was something with my lights, and then you guys pointed out, <laughs> no, it's different, yeah. different background fabrics. Yeah. yeah. So that's interesting. Okay, so I do have a listener quilt to share today. Actually, it's it's oh, a yay. couple. So I'll go ahead and read the email that's attached with them, and, and I'll have – she sent quite a few pictures, so I'll choose a few of both of these and put them up as I'm talking. So it says, hi, Sherry. I want to share pictures of two quilts I finished recently. The first is Happy Go Lucky. I was in the process of cleaning out all my scrap bins when you announced the sew along and talked about how you envisioned it being made entirely from scraps. I decided to start cutting blocks as I worked through through the bins. My original intent was to give it away, but once I sewed the top together, I decided to make it a queen's queen size quilt for one of our guest beds so that I can enjoy it all the time. The second set of pictures has a story behind it. I was given a charity quilt to a long arm, but the borders were horribly wavy. I watched a Kelly Klein video on how to deal with them. During the video, she shared a quilt she made from a tablecloth that had me rushing to my linen closet. My husband's grandmother had embroidered a large tablecloth as a wedding gift for us. As a young bride, I was thrilled to use it and equally heartbroken when it got stained. I couldn't get the stains completely out at the time, so I packed it away. Last week, I treated the stains, washed the tablecloth, made a backing, and loaded it on my long arm. I used my embroidery machine to make a label for it to honor his grandmother and to let my kids know what a treasure it is. The pictures show the result. I cried tears of joy when I finished it. I will never, never go. It will never go back to the closet again. I hope the pictures will inspire others to use those treasured pieces. Best wishes from Missy. I and, love that. I love yeah. how it, you know it really might inspire people to use some things they just have in a drawer. And how relatable is that to our last episode when we were talking yeah. about you know those finished projects that might just be in it like like. Those ones in your bin, Chelsea, in your uh, box yeah, that you said yeah. that you never want to touch. I mean, so she got this and oh, it's stained and it's never going to use it again. And, and, but came up with a new idea. I, I, I did not show Chelsea these pictures before we started today. So I <laughs> uh, messed up on that again, but you'll come, you'll have to see it yeah. afterwards and see the embroidery she put on. It's really neat how she did that. Yeah. I'm really inspired by that because Gammy embroidered some table Don't, like napkins it, dish towels dish towels yeah I know. and I, I still have them because i didn't want to like get them dirty mm-hmm. and i have some too she made me a set too yeah. and i thought the same thing maybe we should cut them into quilt blocks and yeah. put them in a quilt yeah and like put them in the center of a star yeah. or something like that that would be really cool yeah love yeah, that she would she would really like that that'd be neat yeah did that because Good. i think one time she got after me because I wasn't using them. Yeah. But I, I don't want to like, get them dirty. I don't want to get them dirty. Yes. Yeah. So she did all that work with the embroidery. Yeah. And it's really the only thing I have from her yeah. that she's made with her hands for us. Same here. So, yeah. She used to sit and do all that just on the couch all the time. Yeah. Yeah. Well, lately she's been doing a lot of um, pot holders or... For, uh, crocheting them yes. yeah. yeah 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 she's been doing she that crocheted, yeah we yeah. have some of those too mm-hmm. yeah. yeah she's been on a tear with those lately she's, i bet you she's doing <laughs> them for christmas gifts <laughs> yeah yeah she is oh she's, she's giving them away to anyone that comes and visits her she's she, really she's take a couple of these so. oh my That's goodness nice. it's good love for it her. yeah mm-hmm. Well, awesome. Well, speaking of gifts, uh, that's one of the topics we wanted to talk about today. The first one is my mom had mentioned that she was ready to start talking about prepping for the holiday season. And so why don't you go ahead and take it away and tell us what are some of the things you guys are doing in order to prepare yourselves for this upcoming busy season where I know you guys are busy in multiple ways, but quilting is definitely one of those ways. Yeah, so I feel like this is the time of the year when the rush is on to get everything ready if you haven't already started. We actually shared a video, I think it was the last Thursday in September, with a couple of project ideas for Christmas. And I mentioned on that video that there would be another video in October and another one in November, and that the little project ideas would get easier as it got closer. Oh! 
Oh, that's to the smart. holidays. Yeah. So to do it that way. Right. Yeah. So we shared a a lap quilt and a wall hanging in that September video, but we'll have some smaller projects for the end of October and the end of November. But yeah, I definitely think it's time to get your lists made if you haven't already and start if there's anything that needs to be sewn. I it's so funny because I sent out a mentioned this in a blog post actually recently and I got a few comments back from women who have had the same experience that I've had where you're actually sewing something on Christmas Eve trying to get it done and that I did that for so many years and it got so stressful that now I have just made myself quit working on Christmas projects by December 1st because it's just so stressful so yeah it's the end of October and but you could get a lot done between now and and whenever whatever deadline you set for yourself to stop start working. Can I mention something really quick? Yeah. I'm feeling really guilty right now. Do you remember my mom used to make these rag quilts and Billy got one and Candace got one and it was like finally my turn and I wanted you to finish it before Christmas. Is this resonating? Yeah, but I just remembered your younger brother never got one. He never got one. I probably made the experience so terrible. She asked me, Chelsea, hey, you know, there's, I I, I can't even remember what you said. And I remember think, telling you I really, really wanted the rag quilt for Christmas. And she, I don't know how late you must have stayed up to finish that thing, but you finished it. Yeah. And here, this is a family story too. Oh my goodness. The, I, I feel like I asked you if you could wait, right? You till did. after. And the reason was I was making my in-laws a rag quilt. I don't know if you've seen it at Gammy's house, but I made them a rag quilt that year. And I think I made my mom a rag quilt that year too. Yeah. So I did the one for my mom, the one for my in-laws. And I was, and to cut those quilts, you are just cutting, 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 cutting. Anyone who's made one knows, yeah. but I literally couldn't move my hand yeah. for days. I It was like the carpal tunnel type thing. <laughs> and But you wanted yours, so I did. And I feel like I had them all sewn, but I trimmed all three on Christmas Eve yeah. and got them in the washer. And yeah, that was that was crazy. So you definitely overdid it that, yeah. that day, huh? I actually have a one for myself. I actually made one for myself initially, and I still have that one. But I got some better fabrics to make myself one and I cut them all out and they're actually in a box. That's one of my unfinished projects. Really? Yeah. I'm going to have to make that one day because it, they're gorgeous fabrics and ma- I guess maybe time. I should give it to Sean since he never got one. So, <laughs> but You were so tired and your I was hand so hurt so tired bad that Sean never got one. the fringe that, yeah, Sean never got one. But they need it in Salt Lake. So, they're going to yeah. be freezing yes. soon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But I, I I don't remember having one. I don't I? think I made you one either. Okay. I think I made the I was girls. Say. Maybe okay. it was just us. Yeah. And so maybe Gammy and Grandpa do still have theirs. I've seen it at their okay. house. Yeah. yeah. They have it on one of the chairs. Yeah. yeah. And I made one for Mason oh, you when did. we were dating. Yeah. Yeah, I gave it to him for Christmas. Yeah. And I might have made your Aunt Jackie one too. Oh, okay. Oh my goodness. I might have made her the one. The obsession I made of the rag A quilts. lot of those quilts that year, so... Yep, they're still around. <laughs> <laughs> so what about you? Do you have anything you want to make before Christmas? Do you have any Christmas quilt that you want to get done? Yes, I have three of them. And I just need to get past quilt market because there's a couple other things that need to be finalized right. before then. Right. And as soon as I get home, but that's just like fun sewing. There's right. no due date for those. Right. I have to catch up on some favorite things, quilts I didn't even make. Right. So that's what I'm going to be doing, but I don't want it to be stressful. Yeah. And I honestly don't want to. Yeah, I don't want anything crazy. I think actually everything that's going to be due can be done before quilt market for the rest of the year. Right. That's like a big thing. Right. Right. And then, and then you can just sew for fun. Yeah, then I can just sew for fun. November is kind of like chill for me yeah. because a fabric line is due before that. So I don't even have a fabric line right. 
do. And one of your quilts is the Regal Pines and favorite things that you've got pretty much done. It's pretty right? much done. I feel so bad. I have like three rows done, but it because I was making, because it was a demonstration, I had enough de- demonstration pieces to make a bunch of blocks. And so I just need to finish put. And we had a row done and then a, and right. then one that was a row just to almost show the blocks going together. And so, yeah, those are all hang. They're on a hanger. Do you guys hang your quilt <laughs> rows over hangers in your closet? This yes. is a tip if you don't already do this. <laughs> and they're all hanging on hangers in my closet. And my husband on Sunday, he went to go. His suit coats are actually in my closet for uh-huh. some reason. And he goes to go get them. And he's like, this is ridiculous. <laughs> How many quilt rows? He's like, and I'm like, oh, it's Regal Pines. I need to finish that. I keep saying that I'm going to, it's, yeah. But it's done by now that this is filmed. Yeah. I, I actually am going to, well, when this airs, it'll be done. Right. I actually need to call Marion and see if, when I can take that into her. Probably when I get back from my trip that I'm taking. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, because we are in September still, but yeah. this is end of October, no, this and podcast. I, so well, it should be done by now. Yeah, yeah, by the time you possibly even yeah. sh- we may have even yeah. shown that video. even shown a video. Well, and I'm right? glad you actually brought it up because we are doing a video where I'm going to be showing it on the YouTube. Mm-hmm. So I think that might have already aired, actually. Yeah, that's right. what I was thinking. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So you guys will all get to see that. I made that in Favorite Things Fabrics. And honestly, I'm impressed with everyone who joined in on the sew along. The Facebook group has blown up with Regal Pines quilts. Yes. I've gotten messages about that people, you know, that they've made. We shared one as a listener quilt on the podcast this last time, I think. Mm -hmm. So that's what I'm going to be doing. But uh, yeah, I'm making Music Box, the second colorway for Little Town. Mom made the white background version. That's right. Yeah, and I'm making Forest forest Drive. I'm just kind of all treed out. So that's the last one I'm going to make. Yeah. But that's it. I'm not going crazy this year, you guys. Three quilts might seem crazy, but to me, I'm like, I can cut them out and sew them all the blocks at the same time. It'll be fine. Yeah, I, I actually have a jelly roll that I've saved of favorite things to make Regal Pines. So <gasps> you I kind of have that on my it. list too. Yeah, because I made the wall hanging size with you Bountiful did. Blooms. And so I want to make the regular size quilt with my jelly roll that I've hoarded in my closet. So somebody already made theirs from a kit they bought from me. And the reason I'm so excited about it is so I... I did all my green trees first, right? So I have like green trees, red trees, gray trees, but then I have the random tree blocks that Uh have all of the colors in them Uh and prints. And those are really, really cool. So I love the favorite thing. You'll love it. You'll Uh, love it. Yeah. I think it turned out great. I'm excited to make that. Yeah. And are you, so are you making those quilts in favorite things fabric? Yes. Yeah. I want them to be samples. I have all the yardage. Now, yeah. you guys showed that last year, last right? Last Christmas. Last Christmas time yeah, is when you showed right it. before Christmas. And so, then it came out in the summertime, right? Yeah. Yeah. So okay. I, I want to, if it's okay, I want to give people a little dose of real life. This is how real the slump can be. I received Favorite Things Fabrics. I would have already had them a year ago. Like the, it was during soccer season last year that we received the fabrics. We did. And... Everything was like going good. And then it was like our life got so busy. This is that was the first time I'd never finished Mark of Fabric Lines quilts. Yeah. And mom ended up making a music box table Table topper for me. She made a favorite things bench pillow. That's right. She was amazing so that she could help me get those shown. I just it was like a time I was not I could not bring myself to get anything done. And it was really, really close to Simply Delightful. And I think I was kind of burned out. And I didn't want to admit that I was burned out. And I just kind of wanted to like focus on my family. And then I feel like this year was finally the year that I was like getting things caught up on. Like it was no problem doing all my Simply Delightful quilts. It was no problem getting all those things done, but I could not bring myself. So I will say this. I am very happy that I get to finish those quilts in a better state of mind where I'm just sitting and enjoying it and there's no like deadline. I think your point really reaches out to a lot of people though who start holiday projects and maybe don't get them done in time for that year. 
It, it is kind of nice, I think, because this has happened to me in the past before where I've had a holiday project that I didn't get done in time that I wanted to use in my home. But then the next year, here you have an, half the work's done and you can get it finished quickly yeah. and use it and enjoy it, enjoy it. And I don't think there's a problem with that. So if you don't get, if you have something you want to make for the holidays and you don't get it done, Put it in a box and save it for the next year. It, it's going to still be there waiting for you. That makes me feel a lot better. I feel like we can be really honest with ourselves and say, it's okay that you didn't finish that thing. Right. And it. I'm really excited to sew during the holidays is what I'm excited about. Yes. And that's probably going to make up the majority of my November. But, but what's really cool about it is then we can do videos on these quilts in time for Christmas, right. which will be really fun to show them yeah. on the YouTube. But yeah, thank you. Give yourself grace. We talked about this in the last podcast, you know, your inner critic. And I do. Sometimes I feel really guilty that I didn't get things done. But I don't want to feel guilty. I yeah. really am excited to to make them. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Hey. Making me feel better. Well, what I'm going to do. Yeah. Tell me yours. I'm going to make a list of all the things that I could do for the holidays this year that I have kind of on my list that I want to do. And then I'm just going to pick and choose and whatever I get done, I get done. I'm not going to pressure myself. I'm there are more, more Christmases down the road. So whatever I can yeah. get done, I can get done, but I am going to have kind of a little master list of bit large, medium and small projects. And I'm going to try to, you know, just have fun with it. Yes. And not put so much pressure on right. yourself that it's not fun. Yeah. it. This is what we love to do. Yeah. There is one project that I am so giddy about the moment I bought it was the Santa log cabin kit. What was that collection? Swell Christmas. Swell Christmas. You still have that. Oh, I still have it. And I've been hoarding it for years. Oh. And I cannot wait. Someday that's like my go-to Christmas yeah. project, but I'm going to like revel in it. Yes. I'm going to enjoy every second of that dang. Yeah, that's why I haven't started it because I want it to be a time where that's the only thing I'm thinking about. I've, Maybe next Christmas. I have regret that I didn't buy that kit. Oh I was actually at a quilt retreat in Dallas Yeah, this summer when that was available and two or three women were making that quilt from that kit and I was just kicking myself that I hadn't bought, bought that. It. Yes. Yeah. So cute. It is, it is adorable. And I do want to bring something up about the holidays because there were a couple comments on two podcasts ago in the comment section, we had brought up a holiday home tour. Oh. And there were a few people that were like, oh my goodness, we just got so excited. And growing up, mom made Christmas really, really fun because she had all of these Christmas music boxes and Christmas village and all of the things. And we really have to do it. So maybe I can have those quilts ready in time. We can just yeah. do it at your house. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe we could do both, mash it into one video. I think we need an update. Yeah, I think that would I be really I am going to be dressed up, you guys, in a <laughs> Christmas sweater. I'm going to make it a big deal for holiday, for the holiday video. There are the, <laughs> it just reminded me, there is this, this blogger that I follow and she and her sister also have a podcast and they do Christmas videos every year and 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 they get dressed up and it's really cute. I'll have Mom, to I'll have to send you the link so you can watch so we can me. do something along that line. That would be kind of fun. We could even have some of our favorite Christmas treats. They made. do that too. They and they show like the recipes for the treats and I'll have to I'm gonna send you this today so that we can start planning. <laughs> yeah. Is this our pilot video for HGTV? Yeah. <laughs> people. So <laughs> Yeah, I did see those comments too that people were gonna we're looking forward to seeing an updated because we did one with you, Chelsea, but I we never yeah, done we never did one here. A decoration one here yep. at this house. So an updated one for you and, and the first one here. Yeah, people are looking forward to it. Yeah, I, I think last year I was just too tired because we're... we had worked so hard to get favorite things released right yes, before the holidays that's that what I just talking about. Yeah, I couldn't even think about a home tour last year. So Yeah, if I could jump in because with bo both of you. So yeah. yeah, I mean, that was the difference though between having, essentially I think what happened was three fabric lines compared to two. Right. And it just came all crashing down, which is why this is a good topic because I mean, 
hopefully this year will be a lot smoother for you, like you said, because you yeah. don't have that. So now you actually, it's it's all going to work out because you can now use that favorite things fabric to actually do Christmas sewing during that season for you, you know, but I mean, wow, that was, I could even tell, I could even remember last year, just like how much was coming down. Yes. Yeah. Down on you guys that, that, that time of year. So this year should be a lot smoother, hopefully. Yeah. Yeah. And I've been hoarding favorite things because it, it went fast. And normally I, you know, order fabric and I order what I want and then I sell the rest. But this, I still have stuff and I'm not selling it. I want to have it to use. I love this collection. Yeah. I'm actually working on kits, but I'm not selling all of it right. because I, I mean, yeah, I'd love to design a favorite things too in the future. You can't, you can't buy it online. Right. You can't, it's very uh, hard to find it. Yeah. And I know it's in stores. I right. know people have it in stores, but as far as like the Moto Warehouse, I went on because I did the Regal Pines and I decided to do quilt kits. I wanted it to be like exactly what was in the image. Right. And there wasn't a lot of options for me right. to choose from. And I thought, wow, I should have thought of this before because some people didn't get the kits from me and I really wanted them to get the kits from me. So yeah. hopefully, I think some, some shops did jump on and do some kits. I hope they did. I Yeah. yeah. Also, there's this. <laughs> I know the fabric for our next collection has already been sent to the mill. Yeah. I, do you think we'll get sample yardage before, I mean, November, December-ish? Ooh. Six to eight so, weeks from when we know it was ordered would be no end of November, beginning of December. Yeah, so based off of when it was ordered, I believe we could see fabrics before the end of the year because it'll be showing next to March-ish, yeah. probably. Yeah. It's a really fun collection. We hope you all love it. Uh, we're very excited about it and the designs in it. It's it's going to be a fun one. Yeah. Very Sherry and Chelsea. Okay. Yeah. It's like, is that the only thing I say when we talk no. about fabrics? So oh, it's so Sherry and Chelsea. Yeah. But well, it should be because you guys have designed it. it it's but, very fun. Yeah. I definitely think, I definitely know we'll be sewing with it in January. It'll yeah, be, we we'll will be. We'll be sewing with it right after the holidays yeah. for sure. And it's going to be, yeah, I mean, it's going to... It'll be nice because Strawberry Lemonade ships in January or right. should ship in January. We yeah. have heard mills are, are get, everything's on a good everything's timeline. Everything's caught up or early. Yes, even. or early. They they are actually getting fabrics early. Mm -hmm. So it'll be fun because we'll kind of be working, seeing people sewing with that while we are like secretly sewing with like right. the new stuff. Yes. So that will be fun. That'll and I'm excited fun. to see how the fabrics mix. Yes with Me strawberry too. lemonade yes that'll be interesting i can't even i have to yeah. stop talking about it yes yeah but N next topic <laughs> wait no one oh. more thing though because oh. speaking we are actually in the talks of what we want to do for the next couple fabric collections and so it's it's good to kind of kind of like gets me excited about maybe the idea of working with a favorite things too in the near future yeah and doing something yeah. a little bit different but also keeping it that same vibe same palette yeah, because yeah. I don't want to let my favorite things go. Right. Because I have projects I want to make with it. And yes. I don't know, eventually I might get some bundles cut up for it. Maybe I had an idea for a kit, but I don't know. I love that fabric line so much. Yeah. It's pretty. Yeah. Awesome. So the next topic is one that we were actually had as sort of a backup topic when we talked about pre-cut fabrics a couple episodes ago. And searching sort of, trying to find something a little new i was i saw something trending in through google and you guys like i said in the outline you guys can feel free to confirm or deny this statement but i saw that two-tone qu quilts seemed to be trending recently first what do you think is that a quilt trend that you have seen recently or is Google uh, incorrect? I think they've been around for a while. I, I think mom would agree with me. I don't think they're trending right now, but I... If they, if they are trending, that might be true for a compare, you know, for what Google says. Yeah. But I feel like, yeah, two color quilts have always been with us. And yeah. from, uh, honestly, the oldest antique quilts that you look at a good majority of those are yeah. 
a white or a cream background and one color, one color. used throughout the quilt. So just those two mixes. So I, maybe they've more just always been around. It's not like they went away and came back. It's just they've stayed fairly consistent. I, th- I think they're always. always in the background. I think they are an established thing. I don't think they're trending because, and please correct me if I'm wrong, the books Blue and White and Red and White by Minnick and Simpson... Is that uh, correct? Well, they were Martin Gale books. Martin Gale books. With a variety of quilts. With, oh, with a variety. Okay. I By I, all different designers. Maybe I'm just thinking of Minnick and Simpson because oh, they do a lot of... And they did. They had a book, one quilt book on their own that had blue and white blue quilts. Blue and white. And then Martin yeah. Gale had a blue and white sampler book. And, and then there a was red a red. White. Yeah. Yeah. And so those have been... Those were years ago. Yeah. And I will also shout out Camille Ross Kelly is a huge fan of two-tone quilts and she's been doing it for years Yeah, and does a lot of her patterns in different two tones. Gray, blue, and red is a lot of what yeah. she likes. And Well, and then there was the Infinite Variety Quilt Show in New York City with all of the gorgeous red and white quilts yes. that, from that collection. And there was a book, I have the book, I actually heard the book is being republished yeah. again now, but that's that quilt show was what really inspired me to make a couple of red and white quilts yeah. and I've also made blue and white quilts or blue and cream quilts yeah I, I love them and they're they're so versatile you can make a blue and white quilt and it's good any time of the year yeah. but then you can also mix it in with your patriotic quilts yeah and it fits right in and stick it right in the ladder and <laughs> make some separation and but yeah. i will say there was a quilt market we were at where there was a red and quilt red and white quilt display it was that very first one it was the very first one where or we, no it might have been it might have been the l- last one we were at that those quilts were on display over in the in the show part. Yeah. Yes, because I have pictures of that and I think it's from that same quilt market. Yeah, they were gorgeous. Yeah. And that was just a portion of the infinite variety yeah. collection that was traveling around the country and that started in New York City. Wow. But those those were mostly antique quilts, that yeah. red and white infinite variety. Yeah. So this is like these antique quilts are old. Yeah. And that was a thing then. Right. Yeah, I think two tone definitely it's been established whether or not, you know, you see an influx of them being made. I don't well, know. That's what I was wondering. I mean, some things that have been around for a while, yeah. they go through the little spikes and everything. But yeah. Ha- have you guys ever made any like two dark tone color quilts? So not I know monochromatic. I, well, I know you always say red and white, blue and white, cream. You could even do, do like something in gray but have you ever done two like per, like a br- per, gray and a blue or something yeah or even like a blue and a green yeah something like that i mean the very first quilt i made, made for you. you was blue and green and white and a little white <laughs> yeah. yeah so but yeah yeah and i liked it <laughs> yeah and i liked it <laughs> i typically don't <gasps> go with too dark i usually i but i love open white space that was like a trend in the 90s right so but you know if you go over to the modern you know the quote unquote modern quilt shows you're gonna see i feel like a lot more quilts like color that. based color yeah. based saturation based whether it's two different dark colors or four different dark colors yeah. I feel like you're going to find a lot of that more there, there. probably than on the more yeah. traditional, you know, all the lines between the different differentiations can be pretty fluid, but yeah, I feel like there are a lot of two, two color quilts in the yeah. modern. Okay. Yeah. Cause I mean, spectrum. I saw some when I was, when I was searching them, I was like, Oh, that's sort of neat. But, and it yeah. got me thinking of, I was like, yeah, most of your background fabric is lighter mm-hmm. you know and I, I haven't really seen it, any of those type of quilts from, from your end but i didn't know if, if if um yeah if you've ever thought about making a quilt like that or or had made a quilt like that strawberry and lemonade has some really fun combinations yeah that you could do that with you could take the citrine and the teal and you could put it on a dark gray background yeah. and that would be super striking and very 
very just striking yeah I feel eye like. catching for sure yes. yeah there's a lot of different color combos and i didn't even realize how many really really resonated well together until i made sunshine girl yes and that's when i was like wow like there are a lot of fun combos you could do i like your idea of doing that on a dark gray background mm-hmm. almost like not like the mochi but maybe a cross like weave a like cross a cross weave, weave. linen Ooh. yeah i i do i just want to say one more comment though as far as trends at quilt market, which is when it was consistent, like we were going to quilt market twice a year, that's like what people would talk about. What was the, what was, what did you see the most of at quilt market? I don't think two tone quilts is going to be it. Like, I'll be honest with you. I am curious to see just from what I've seen on social media, I am really excited to see what quilt market has to bring. I am because that's kind of you used to walk through it and be super overwhelmed by like right. everything you saw. I'm so I'm so excited, you guys. It's yeah. going to be great. It's going to be great to be there. I, I was thinking too, I've been doing the Moda Blockheads five blocks. Yeah. And I've been kind of alternating between the blues and the greens and the reds and the pinks with my yeah. blocks and kind of keeping it even so I, I'll have a good mix in that quilt. But I keep going to your sunshine girl. <sighs> I have a picture of it on my phone. And so oh, call it using the color combos, using the color combos for my blocks from that quilt that you just have so many of them yeah. in that one space that I can just easily, it's easier than grabbing the fabrics and putting them together. I just yeah. look at your quilt. So it honestly, that quilt, it's like not very many are the same because right. there's so many options yes. with the different hues. Yes. Yeah. Well, so I have a, a question then if, Using one of your fabric lines, could you make a true two two color quilt with your fabric? Because I know that there's prints on them, so that was sort of a, a question I had: is or do they need to be solid fabrics to be defined no. as that? No, I have an but example. They, have, they should be matching, though, right? The the actual yeah. color, whether or not the prints are different. I will give you two examples. Mom has a quilt. She used all navies, navy prints. It was in your book. You know which one I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah, Home and Hearth, the cover Home quilt. Home and Hearth, the cover quilt. Mom did that. All navies from a variety of our collections. Yes. And then light colored backgrounds. Yeah. And then I also took our navies and I mixed it with Camille Ross Kelly's navies. Well, her Bonnie was still designing with her at the time. And I made my very first swoon quilt yes. doing the navy and like an ivory. And yeah. those, oh, and a gray too. I did blue and gray actually. Yeah, you mm. did. Yeah. And those were considered two, two, two like were, yeah. were the blues the exact same color or were they actually a little different? Some of the. They were slight variations, okay. but close. Hers but was close more enough. of an American royal. Mine was very much navy. Ours were very much mm-hmm. navy at the time. I used desert bloom navy, which was a true navy. It almost looked black. It was very, it was very, a very deep navy very, in that yeah. collection. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I feel like, you know, you have the, when we design patterns, we really seek to use the whole collection to show yeah. shops the different things they can do with it. But I feel like sometimes we will do a second option with fewer colors. Yeah. And that's kind of what Camille does. Usually when she has a two color quilt, she's also kind of got a multi colored version of it. She does two versions of it. Most of the time she'll do. Yeah. She has a couple that she's just done. Camille loves the color blue. So you will see a lot of blue and white or with gray added. Right. That's like her favorite thing. Yeah. And she has great collections for that too. A lot of her recent collections right. are great for that. Yeah. Good deal. Now you, you said something that made me, maybe that this would be the last question though, because you said, Oh, I go to quilt market and we see all the trends. And so you didn't, you don't think two tone quilts will be trending in your opinion at quilt market. So what are some of your project, pre- predictions for what you guys might see? Why don't you, Oh, wow. Go ahead and, and make some, and, and then I, I know it well, won't be the next podcast, but maybe sometime in November we can see, or no, it will be the, the podcast, first podcast in November, you can sort of report back and see if these predictions were true. Yeah, I think there will be two-tone quilts. There will be those there. They're there always will, there. Always there. Yeah. yeah. Always. I didn't. Yeah, I hope it didn't sound like oh, there won't be any. No, right. they well, but are, you're just saying they're not going to be they're, like they're just in a, everywhere. A, yes, they're a basic. Yeah, I, that's a basic color yeah. combination that you always 
find? I I mean, what I'm going to project for quilt market is there's going to be a lot of color and a lot of creativity and a lot of really great quilt patterns, I think. I think there's going to be a lot of really great quilts. I have seen... Well, hold on now. That's, that's of course, <laughs> that's going to happen. He's going to tell you I'm that's gonna, too general. That's very broad. <laughs> <laughs> hey, is but there, I think... What do you, what, what's going to be trending? What is there something... Is there a type of quilt? Is there a type of pattern... What do you think? Or or is it or is it impossible to know? I I guess I would say impossible. I think what I know I will get out of quilt market. Yeah, this isn't even answering your question, but I know that it's going to be a lot of creativity and a lot of inspiration. Yeah. I know I will see that. But you're right. I can't really project and you know, I don't I, oh, there's going to be all these it's triangle be more quilts. Applique. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, what yeah, I'm saying. Yeah. There's going to be tons of applique, like flowers or, yeah. or, 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 or trees or what I don't know, star yeah. blocks. I don't know. I mean, even looking at the newest catalog, and I can say this because the, it has re- it's been the, shown now. It's been shown mm-hmm. now. Uh, even looking at Moda's catalog for Quilt Market, it's really holiday. It's very a lot of Christmas collections we're going to be seeing at Quilt Market, Halloween. Mm-hmm. And there's a little bit of everything in that catalog. Yeah. And I I think that's market is so big that there is anything that you're looking for is going to be there in some way, shape or form. Yeah. And I do hope that shop owners attend because I think that in-person experience is really important. Right. And you get to see everything up close. I'm so excited about that. Yeah. I, I can't, I want to connect again, finally. Like, I'm like ready yeah. to be there. I wasn't able to attend last year and I'm able to make it this year, so. Yeah. I think just being surrounded by everything, all of the colors, all of the different ways that they will be put together in quilts is just so inspiring and it just triggers your own creativity to yeah. where you you might see something that inspires you to put something together that, is nothing like what you saw, but but it came about because you saw all of these different yeah. mixes and matches, and I, it's it's very yeah. it's very rewarding to go to quilt market. We're always very exhausted, but we're always filled with that creativity. But what about colors, though? Because like even looking at these quilts that you have here, like we mentioned at the beginning, the background fabric has changed for you guys. Is that just something that changed for you guys, or? Has that been more of an industry, like other designers have changed their backgrounds? Does that trend or move at all? I feel like more people are trending toward the lighter backgrounds unless you are a reproduction fabric designer. I feel like if you're sewing with reproduction fabrics, you're always going to stay with those ivories. Because you're not moving to that more modern, bright vibe. Right, yeah. Because I remember a while ago we did a, an episode we should probably do another one because i actually enjoyed that where you brought out your first ever fabric collection which was bright sun Mm -hmm. and i remember you guys talking about it and just saying this was sort of in that in style then when we first designed it these colors and the and the color combinations yeah so that's i was just wondering if if those have changed a little bit overall or i know you guys change as you progress but but I, I, I don't know. I was just wondering if, if there's sort of colors that come and go. I want to say this about Bright Sun. I'm really grateful for that collection. It was really not everyone's cup of tea. And it was very specific to what it was designed for. But yeah, it was it was trendy. Southwestern I was, with a trendy vibe. Yeah, that's yes, what it was. I South feel I, su- I feel like that is the perfect definition of what was trendy at the time. Mm-hmm. That collection, and yeah, I think I think right now what's different is we are all about the color. We have so much color going on in our co- in our uh, collections, right? And we are not afraid to be using all these colors and show how we can implement them in a quilt. Yes. Yeah. I'm loving it. Yeah. Lots more options in the quilt blocks for. Yeah. We have some fun things planned with the next one. It's going to be really exciting. I know we say this every time. Yeah. Well, but... no, and I feel like I love scrap quilts. And so I love that our collections yeah. can be put together in a quilt and it can look like it was scrappy. Yeah. So that, I agree. that's something that I really strive for. Yeah. Good deal. 
Well, that sort of took another direction that I didn't yeah. see coming, yeah. but Sorry. I think that was good. I, yeah, no, that I, was. It's I always... get curious and start digging deeper, you know? Yeah. Yeah. No, that's awesome. Well, our next episode will be just a week from now on October 30th. It will be a listener question episode. We will be at Quilt Market. We will be at Quilt Market for the final day when that releases wow. and coming home that evening. And yes, we. But we will have that episode taped in advance, and yeah. yeah. And before I won't be going to Quilt Market, but hopefully uh, Chelsea and I am going to get with her, and hopefully we can get some content from there that I can that she can bring back to me that I can edit and and show some things on on our YouTube channel as well. I think next year in twenty twenty four, if you guys are going, I, I'll be going that year i am so That'd sad great. you're actually yeah. not yeah. going to be there i was really excited i i with the possibility <laughs> yes of the possibility of him going and you meeting shop owners and just kind of seeing that whole vibe yeah next year might work out a lot better well one i'll be married by then yeah and some other things is just pretty busy right now for, with some other things i do so we'll see i th the next year should be should be I'm hoping to go next year. Yeah. yeah. Well, we will get some videos that you can edit. Yes. So, yeah. For sure. I'm very <laughs> excited for Billy to be my mentor before I go yes. and teach me a few things so I can get some content <laughs> and make a fun video. Yes. So I thought that today's episode was really great and I appreciated that we were able to go in some different directions yeah. and where the topics took us. Yeah. So thanks so much for stopping by. 